Sacramento Public Library Authority Board. Today's date is September 28, 2023. It's 3.02 p.m. and this meeting is called to order. And at this time, I'm gonna ask the clerk if you'd please read the call the roll and establish quorum and read the public comment prior to the Pledge of Allegiance. Sean Lalowey. Karina Talamantes. Here. Katie Valenzuela. Here. Katie Maple. Here. Mai Bang. Here. Bill Serna. Here. Patrick Kennedy. Rich Desmond. Sue Frost. Here. Pat Hume. Mary Jane Lopez Taft. Rob Brewer. Kevin Spees. Present. Sean Farmer. Garrett Gatewood. Here. Lisa Kaplan. Noel Mora. Bina Lefkowitz. Here. Saul Hernandez. Here. Jennifer Larratt. Portia Middleton. Sergio Robles. Linda Budge. And that's a quorum with 10 members present. Thank you. And I um, will read the oh. statement. This meeting of the Sacramento Public Library Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T UVerse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.satcounty.net. Today's meeting will be repeated Saturday, September 30 at 4 p.m. on channel 14 and can also be viewed on Metro Cable 14's YouTube channel. This meeting will also be recorded via Zoom. A DVD copy will be available upon request no later than two weeks following today's meeting. The full agenda, including reports, is available on the library website at www.saclibrary.org. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should complete a speaker identification form located at the back table and give it to the clerk. Members attending via Zoom should raise their hand in the Zoom program. Please speak clearly when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Comments are limited to three minutes so that everyone may be heard. Thank you. And I wonder if Director Talamantes, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Okay, our first item on the agenda is public comment on matters not on the agenda. I wonder if we have any, no hands raised and no one on the phone. So we'll move on to item three, presentations. And 3.1 is Friends of the Sacramento Public Library. I see Devin walking down the stairway. Good afternoon. Hey, Good afternoon. So uh, my name is Devon Graves. I am the Vice President for the Friends of the Sacramento Public Library. Thank you all for the opportunity to present on behalf of our organization. So um, just a couple updates to share. First, uh, membership continues to be on the rise. So we're excited to continue to get those numbers up and get folks invested in the friends and supporting the library through our organization. Um, last week, a group of friends uh, participated in an opportunity to tour independent bookstores in the city and county. And one of those stops, of course, had to be at the book den that is supported by the friends. And so it was great to get people who had never been out and see it. And now they're exposed to it and know that that resource exists for them. And then most importantly, why we're here is to present the library with a nice old hearty check. I believe this is it right here. So this beautiful little, you know, little check here, this is a perfect check for me. You know, this is the right size for me. So we're, um. we will be presenting this today and celebrating our big day of giving efforts. Now we're led in part by our fearless uh, colleague, Anita Scurry here, who um, participated and helped lead our big day of giving. And this is about $104,000 that we will be 
given to the library to continue to support the great work that's happening there. And I also wanted to make sure to give a shout out to our North Natomas uh, friends. Our president, Barbara Lee, is here as well, who's participating and who does a lot of work on behalf of the friends as well. So I won't take up too much time, but happy to take any questions or comments that you have. And thank you for your partnership and opportunity to present on behalf of the friends. And uh, we have Supervisor Cerna is in the queue to speak. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I would just gonna suggest through the chair that uh, maybe all of us go down in the pit and take a photo with you and um, make sure that we shake your hand and give you a hearty thank you. Yes, I was going to suggest the same thing. I would. You said you were going to present it to the library authority, so I wasn't sure if you meant you are presenting it today. I'll let Director Poyle. <laughs> I, I think, Manager, I think we were um, uh, at your will, whether at the beginning of the meeting or the end of the meeting, whatever is easiest, we can do the photo at that point. Oh, we I can do it. Just... I think we can do it now. Okay. This is exciting. Okay. I can't believe you raise that much money All right. that's amazing we were quite surprised that as an all-volunteer organization we were able to raise that money too um, and we were very pleased because that buys a lot of books for kids who need it and notice the special shirt that i'm wearing I'll give it back to you. Anything interesting? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Barbara. Come on, Mr. Now, this is a lot of money. That would be more than that. If I can do it, I'll put my phones. Three, two, one. Thank you. So much money. Thank you. You've done a great job with Bobby. I've got to hold it up. Well, the Friends of the Library uh, play an important role in, in not only advocating for the library and marketing the library services, but raising money. But I want to say over all the years, I don't remember um, that big of a check, but maybe I'm, that that's wonderful. Thank you. It seems like it was the biggest. So congratulations on all your hard work doing that for the library system. Okay. Uh, next item is summer success stories. Okay. So uh, I'm Christy Ham. I'm the youth services manager and I'm the recipient of some of this money that you all just got that big check for. Uh, the things in my office, the Book First program and summer reading are where that those funds are going to go. So we're really excited to have the support of the friends. They do magic all the time. So today I am here to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, our summer success. So a couple of things that happened this summer that I want to make sure you're all aware of, and that is our summer reading program and also lunch at the library. So first of all, summer reading. I know I came up here a uh, few months ago to tell you a preview, but now I can tell you how it all worked out. So summer reading is an effort we do across the community to encourage reading for pleasure across for all ages and also helping to address that summer learning loss. And with the idea that books are just the beginning, but books can take you anywhere. And this year was a success. We had 23,000 signups. That's up 12% over last year. Uh, 16,000 finishers who read five or more books. And we pick that as a number because reading five books over the summer is the amount that really helps ameliorate that summer learning loss for kids. And so we know we have er we've erased a thousand years of summer learning loss because of the summer reading program that you all took part in. Uh, additionally, this year, our community read 2.5 million minutes, which is a lot. I didn't calculate how many hours that is, but it's really an impressive amount of work that our community did. 
Uh, in addition, they all uh, people read 25 books and earned a medal, and 7,500 people did that, more than we've had in years past. And in a partnership with the city of Sacramento, as well as Rancho Cordova and Galt, we've provided swim passes for kids. So this year, over 6,500 passes. We think summer is a time for healthy minds and bodies. And so it was a success this year as well. So I have so many great quotes from our community. They really responded in kind about how much of a difference this program makes. We heard of all kinds of parents saying their children were now reading independently because of this program, or they're looking forward to going to the library. Um, we heard, here's some pictures of happy summer readers, the young man in front of the purple dinosaur at Central with his giant book, a list of books that he's checked out. Uh, that's the entire read to a dog contingent of volunteers and their trainees at the Carmichael Library. All the dogs and volunteers earned their summer reading medals for reading 25 books or more. And then there's a family at the Southgate Library below. So just a few of the great summer readers uh, who've been taking part. We definitely have been hearing so many great things again from families. We got some some love on social media, people sharing how much they look forward to this program. This year's medal was purple and it glittered and people liked that. Um, definitely calling out their local library and what has made a difference in their lives. Um, so all kinds of things. People can't wait for, until next year. They, a parent wrote in while they were uh, using their Wi-Fi to work. Then their kid was checking out books and they wanted to let us know. Um, and again, hearing from somebody who's 72 and loves participating in summer reading. So it's not just for kids. It's really a whole family, all ages um, situation for our community. Uh, our communications team did a really great job calling out this as well, did a bunch of different things on both social and paid media to really get the word out about this program. Uh, here is we did transit shelters and billboards. You may have seen summer reading on a bus near you or on a billboard in your area. So all of those things help to spread the word. And then, as if that wasn't enough, we also provide lunch at the library. So I've talked a little bit about that when we kicked off, but here is how it went this year. We served uh, meals for free for kids 0 to 18 at 13 different locations for eight weeks this summer. Served 11,421 students altogether. Uh, through some really generous funding from the state of California, we were able to provide some staffing support for libraries. We provided uh, some teen paid positions. We provided uh, enrichment activities and books for home libraries. And so this is our 10th year of lunch at the library, and we have served over 100,000 meals to area children thanks to the support. Um, so I want to go a little bit into some of the components of lunch at the library. Youth development is something that we take very seriously. And so this year we had 58 paid teens who earned work experience and got some exposure to, again, the workforce, learning more about the library. They contributed over 3,000 hours. And they did some weekly meetings that we also focused on social emotional concepts like uh, communication, positive communication, a learning growth mindset, and more. And so here's just a few of the comments from the youth who in these meetings. We did virtual meetings so that kids at all different libraries could meet with each other because we know how important connection is as part of everything. So um, we definitely got some amazing um, comments from the youth. They, they appreciated being able to contribute to their community and earning some money at the same time, uh, definitely learning more about their own development and seeing what an impact the library makes. In addition, we did some farm to summer programming, helping to connect students with fresh fruits and vegetables. We had a farmer come out and do some education at the Colonial Heights Library, uh, sharing uh, some insect program and learning about pollinators. And then I'm gonna invite Todd Deck, our community engagement services manager up to talk about some innovation programming we did with a partnership with Health, Health Education Council and the Food Bank. I am Todd Deck. I'm the Community Engagement Manager. Um, we partnered with Christie's Department on Innovation Programming at the Sacramento Library this summer. And through the Innovation Grant, we were able to take our mobile kitchen on the road, which we visited several locations. And through our partnerships with Health Education Council, we were able to provide healthy education and nutrition lessons that was very hands-on in nature. 
And I have to say, walking through a library and smelling fresh quesadillas being made was a first for me. <laughs> it was really uh, just a remarkable program. And through the Innovation Grant, we were able to supply some special custom like bento boxes for kiddos. And then we also were able to provide free copies of Leanne Brown's book, Good and Cheap, which is a book designed to cook in a healthy way, specifically if you were on benefits. Um, we also were able to provide boxes of dry goods via the Sacramento Food Bank to people. And I realized we were giving out copies of this book and free boxes of food for families and reached out to the author to see if she would work with us. And Leanne generously agreed to do that. And so we hosted three virtual cooking programs in July that were widely attended and we received just wonderful feedback. We did learn some lessons uh, asking people to turn on their oven in July for a zucchini casserole was maybe not the best idea. I did it, it tasted wonderful, but we also did things like pasta and other stuff like that. Um, I think the quote there, dinner is one of the most stressful meals for me to cook for my family. And I'm going to apply this technique from now on to keep me calmer as I prepare it. It was fun cooking along with her. Um, Leanne is also a yoga instructor. And so she would incorporate this idea of awareness into cooking as an art of, as a form of self-care. And so it was really a unique program. Um, we did receive feedback from a patron that was probably my favorite one where she said she was in a transitional housing situation and she only had a hot plate available to her. And she felt like through this class, she actually had some skills to cook in a healthy way. So it was a really fun program. And I just really thank Christy for partnering with us on doing it. All right. So we just, we couldn't do things like this without our partners. And so we just want to thank, again, the state of California providing the funding for lunch at the library, as well as our food partners, Natomas Unified School District and Elk Grove Unified School District, and then Health Education Council and the Sacramento Food Bank and Family Services. Together, we all made some magic happen this summer. So um, if you have any questions, Todd or I, our contact information is there, but I'm also glad to entertain any questions you may have today. Yes, Director Talamantes. Congratulations on all your success with summer reading. I thought that the marketing was excellent. The gifts, the medals, the shininess, you and your team did an incredible job. Um, I love quesadillas, so how to make a comment about that. I'm sure it was really <laughs> fun for everyone. Easy to make, really quick too. Um, but just kudos. Uh, I was a little bit nervous at the beginning when we started summer reading because of our numbers the previous year. And I was like, okay, let's do everything we can so that we could beat him from last year. And we did it, yeah. which means that we're just setting the bar higher and higher and higher. And mm -hmm. that's what we're going to continue doing. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Because between the age of zero and third grade, they learn to read. And after third grade, they read to learn. So mm -hmm. if they don't learn to read, it's, it's a stumbling block for their future. So important. I also wanted to ask Todd, um, what was the technique? Was the technique cooking in one pan, or the what was the technique? I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, okay, you yeah. described the thought process of n nurturing your own body or taking care of yourself. Is that the technique you were referring to? Um, so Leanne would do the practice of being aware so it would be like while the pasta was boiling it's like i want you to identify something you can see something you can touch something you can smell and really it was this idea of sort of slowing down and really appreciate what's around you to make something and to nourish yourself in a really different way that i had never seen before in a cooking class um, it was definitely not a cooking class that you would see on like HGTV. She really leaned into that this cooking can be messy and it can be uh, maybe you're going to go off course a little bit and it's still going to wind up uh, delicious. We made uh, a tuna pasta, uh, a tuna pasta recipe, a zucchini tomato cobbler, and then... Oh. Yeah, it was delicious. And then I forgot what the third one was. It was a long time ago. It was something savory, though, in summary. So that's really fun because a lot of young people are uh -huh. not exposed. Their parents work and they're not exposed to home cooked 
meals as much because their parents are in a hurry and and getting fast food. So it's good to learn and, about that. And what made it really special was that the food boxes that we were providing to select sites, uh, these had ingredients that were we, we were featuring. So we were really setting people up to be creative and successful with it. Wow. You, nowadays you go to the library and you never know what you're going to find there, right? <laughs> you guys are awesome. So I don't see anyone else on the Chair dais Frost, um, queued in. Alternate it... board member Mina Lefkowitz has a comment. Thank you. Uh, Director Le Lefkowitz, please proceed. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to the staff and to the library board for supporting um, really important programs in the summer around food access and learning loss with summer reading. And I love the fact that you have 58 teams uh, that you hired as interns to help deliver the programming. That was really exciting to see that. So mostly just wanted to, um, you know, just congratulate the staff uh, for some really creative programming. And I look forward to hopefully expanding it over the years. Thank you. I want to congratulate all the other participants for um, all the medals for reading over the summer. Is this, uh, is this a public comment, maybe? Yeah, so I would like to give all the congratulations about the, the segment of the graduate and on all those Matters about a summary. Okay, and he, he, I, I'm sorry, I was having a hard time hearing. Did did he say he was acknowledging how what a great program it was and and the medals? Great. Oh, and you got yeah. all the medals. Medal with, congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. That's awesome. Great job, you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Is there uh, are there any other board members that uh, online that wanted to speak? And how about any other public comments? Well, uh, Christy and Todd, thank you so much for a very um, exciting report and for all the hard work, all the good work that you're doing in the library system. All right, our next item is item number four, executive team report. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, most of my written report are the facts and figures from the summer reading presentation. So I encourage you to take a look at those and um, they truly show the benefit and the, um, the impact the library has in our community. And we're really excited to be able to do this and have the great partners that we did. Um, and we're looking forward to doing this program again next year and already planning to how we can improve it and reach more people. Um, I wanted to highlight two items. Um, first is uh, on Monday evening, uh, Deputy Director Jared Keller and I attended the Elk Grove Planning Commission meeting. And at that meeting, they discussed and uh, made approval for the site for the uh, replacement Elk Grove Library on Waterman Road. And so that will be going to the full Elk Grove City Council next month. So that project is in process and we're really excited to, uh, to have that process start. Um, and we'll we'll uh, keep you updated on those um, on that progress as well. And then um, this last weekend, uh, we had the opportunity, two of our friends affiliates had fundraisers. Um, so the evening of Saturday, uh, the North Sacramento Hagenwood Library had a Taste of North Sacramento fundraiser. And then the uh, McClatchy friends had an evening with friends at the McClatchy uh, location. So we attended both of those events. They were well attended by members of the community. Um, and those were fundraisers to support library programs and services that the friends put on. Um, we appreciate the invitation from the friends to attend and take part. They were great events and we're looking forward to our continued participation with those uh, future fundraisers from other friends groups as well. Um, and um, that's the extent of my um, of my report. And I'm happy to answer any questions that folks may have um, at this time. Thank you, Director Coyle. 
I do not see anyone in the queue in person. Do we have anyone online? No questions. So thank you very much. Our next item is information. And we have a monthly financial report and a monthly treasurer's report. I don't know if there was going to be a presentation or if we were just asking if anyone had questions regarding that. Peter? Uh, Madam Chair, for these reports, these are just informational and the larger budget item at the end, Johnny will probably talk about. Okay, great. And I don't see anyone in the queue with questions regarding informational items. Is there anyone online? And so, and is there any public comment regarding this? Okay, great. Then we'll move on to the next item, which is consent. Chair Frost, um, I wanted to point out one correction on page 21, the um, action summary. There was a correction. The director Bean of Lefkowitz pointed out that the County Board of Supervisors, it was actually the County Board of Education decided that literacy would be top priority. I just wanted to point out that. Change. Okay. You'll just make that correction. Okay. And I wonder if anyone has any comments or questions regarding consent on. Okay, uh, we have a motion from Director Talamantes and a second from Director Maples. And the clerk will please call the roll call. Sean Lavloe. Karina Talamantes. Aye. Katie Valenzuela. Yes. Katie Maple. Aye. My Bang. Yes. Phil Cerna. Aye. Patrick Kennedy. Rich Desmond. Sue Frost. Aye. Pat Hume. Mary Jane Lopez Taff. Rod Brewer. Aye. Kevin Spees. Aye. Sean Farmer. Garrett Gatewood. Aye. Rina Lefkowitz. Yes. Saul Hernandez. Aye. Jennifer Larrett. Aye. The motion passes with 12 members present. Thank you. Our next item is uh, action item, the fiscal year 2023-24 final budget. And we have Johnny E. Up at the dais, at the speaking podium. Good afternoon, Chair Frost and members of the board. Um, this item is the uh, fiscal year 23-24 final budget, position control, and fee structures. Um, I'm, I'm happy to report that we don't have too many uh, changes uh, within the budget. Um, revenue streams are uh, coming in as, uh, as planned and uh, expenditure. There's a few minor changes as well, too. Um, so I'll, I'll refer you to the staff report and related exhibits for uh, the details. Um, so dive, diving right into the numbers on the final budget for uh, fiscal year 23-24 uh, revenues, we are projecting at uh, 60.5 million uh, total and expenditures of 60.3 million combined for a net surplus of, of uh, just a little bit over $200,000. Um, exhibit A1, uh, this is a three-year flow of uh, fund balances. So um, in fiscal year 22, uh, we ended the year at uh, 54.2 million. So these are based on audited uh, financial statements. Um, and then most recently, we ended the uh, fiscal year 22-23. Um, staff is working hard to uh, wrap up the, the books and uh, closing for the upcoming final audit uh, within next week. Um, so total revenues are projected to be at about uh, 59.8 million and 53.9 uh, uh, million for um, expenditures um, for a net surplus of approximately uh, $6 million. Um, the surplus is a combination of, of a couple of factors um, that, you know, throughout the year there were uh, supply chain issues as well as uh, shipping uh, delays. Um, and so a number of projects were not, um, you know, started or, um, you know, completed. Um, so those projects have been uh, carried forward into um, the fiscal year 24 uh, budget already. Um, and then the other factor too um, includes uh, property tax uh, came in higher than anticipated. So 
um, the uh, the real estate market continues to be stable, uh, although there's um, you know always discussions about uncertainties down the road. So the out years are more of a concern than uh, the next couple of years. Um, and then uh, looking at um, so the total fund balance for fiscal year twenty. Uh, June 30, 2023, um, we're estimating to be about 60.2 million. Um, and then looking ahead in fiscal year 23, 24, uh, so total revenues are projected to be at 60.5 million combined um, and expenditures at 60.3 60 million. Um, so a net surplus of uh, approximately uh, a little bit over $100,000. Um, and then the uh, second to the last column, this is what, you know, what we call the cash flow and economic uncertainty reserves uh, column. Um, so the county is at about 11.6 million, uh, city of Sacramento at 2.6 million and 1.1 million and 445,000 for measures X and B respectively. Um, and then the last column, uh, this is the unreserved fund balance at June 30, 2024. Um, so for a total of uh, $44.6 million combined. Um, exhibit A2, um, this is our budget summary. So showing the total sources of funds. Um, if you look at the second column, which, which shows approved budget. Um, so as you'll recall, the, the board had adopted the budget uh, back in May of um, this year. And so the total budget for revenues were 59.1 million. And um, so the final budget is 60.5 million combined. So for an increase of 1.4 million uh, total. Um, and then on, this, on the expenditure side, um, we're looking at uh, a, an increase of 1.5 million. So again, 58.9 was the May adopted budget and 60.3 million is our uh, current projection. So um, using approximately another $117,000 in fund balance um, for the, this upcoming fiscal year. It, um, so exhibit A3, this is the total sources of funds. Um, so again, the, the May budget as adopted was 59.1 million total. And um, the final budget we are recommending to be at 60.5 million combined. So um, again, for a net increase of 1.4 million. And the major increase is um, the county contributions uh, via property taxes. Um, so that's coming in at... Um, another 1.2 million. And staff has been in discussion with the county assessor to um, to update the property um, tax revenues as, as we get closer and we close the books for um, fiscal year 23. Um, so the other increase are interest income. Um, so a couple of factors that uh, contribute to that increase. Uh, one is the higher fund balances and two, um, uh, increase in bond market rates um, due to the, the, the Fed uh, continued incre uh, increases in the rates. Um, so the interest income are uh, estimated to be at another 152,000 for this upcoming fiscal year. And exhibit A4, um, this is the total expenditures for the entire library uh, budget. Um, so again, the approved budget back in May was 50, 58.9 million. And um, the final budget is recommended to be at 60.3 million total um, for an increase of $1.5 million. And the increase um, is primarily um, due to the uh, enterprise system that the board had approved back in May, actually back in August. Um, you know, we currently use what we call a an Eden financial software system. And um, so this system is a legacy system. It's been with the library for about 18 years. So we are looking forward to um, to the upgrade and um, using the the, uh, the modern software and, and uh, tools that we, that the new system has to offer. So, um, so that is uh, 431,000 and another 618,000 is for uh, 24 hour security surveillance systems, I mean, uh, security surveillance in uh, various branches. So, five of our, five of our locations um, for after, after hours uh, surveillance and so forth. Um, and then another 320,000 for building improvements at the Carmichael branch, uh, RK branch, and the Valley uh, location. 
and another 100,000 for um, salaries and benefits for a second uh, central uh, central supervisor at um, our biggest branch, so which is the, the central building. Um, so looking at the book budget, um, we are recommending to keep it at 8.4 million. So this is a solid budget for uh, books and materials collections. Uh, the the uh, CSD staff, they do an amazing job to uh, to procure uh, e-books, um, electronic uh, books, um, hard copies, and uh, subscription as well too. So uh, we are recommending to keep um, books and materials at 8.4 million. Um, and then under position control, um, we we uh, exhibit exhibit B. Um, so again, we are recommending to add a one branch supervisor position to provide leadership and support at the uh, the central branch. As you know, that's a big uh, facility. We have five floors, and there are uh, patrons and staff throughout the building uh, within every every single day. Um, so we are recommending to go from 319 FTEs to 320 FTE total. And so this is a bit tiny, but this is our um, job position control. Um, so again, from 319 to uh, 320 FTEs. And lastly, the uh, fee, stru fee structure, so exhibit C, um, there are no changes. Um, as you know, we've uh, the board had approved waiving fines. Um, during the, the COVID years, and we uh, continue to collect fees only for uh, the, the fee structure. So that concludes my report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Do, do we have any board members with questions, comments? Any board members on the call? We did, the budget committee did meet. Um, we did have a, a um, a great report as just the same report as this one, basically. And we talked a little bit about the supervisors at the central branch and how um, they they work together. It's it, it is it, it's a big library. Um, I'm trying to remember, Johnny. They they work on each separate floor as a supervisor of the separate floors. Is that how it works, or? Here, Frost, I'll answer that if you don't, if that's all right. Um, so currently, one, there's one supervisor who supervises the entire building. And so this plan is to have a second supervisor. And how that workflow is going to be determined, we haven't finalized. But the idea is that we have four service points. So ostensibly, they would, they would be assigned to cover two of those service points or provide direction or guidance. Um, so really, we're looking at this this the two positions to work very closely together in tandem for day to day, and then they'd each have different portfolios of responsibilities, whether it's programmatic or some other area, um, to to lighten that load, because um, they spend a lot of time responding to customer inquiries and um, uh, security incidents, mm -hmm. and so we'll be able to continue with operations by sharing that load with with another person. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, do we have any public comment on this item? No public comment. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. So moved by Director Talamantes and second by Director Gatewood. Please call the roll. Sean Lalowy. Karina Talamantes. Aye. Katie Valenzuela. Yes. Katie Maple. Aye. Mai Vang. Yes. Phil Cerna. Aye. Patrick Kennedy. Rich Desmond, Sue Frost, I, Pat Hume, Mary Jane Lopez Taff, Rod Brewer, I, Kevin Spees, I, Sean Farmer, Garrett Gatewood, I, Bina Lefkowitz, yes, Saul Hernandez, I, Jennifer Larrett, I, and motion passes with twelve members. And I want to thank you, Johnny E., for all of your excellent management of our library authority budget. Okay, item eight is reports, ideas, questions from board members. Um, Peter, let's connect um, after this meeting. I want to talk about the new uh, library for Rancho. 
do we have any other members? Oh, uh, Director Talamantes. Uh, I just want to thank the South Dakota's library staff uh, for helping me get my books off the shelves, teaching me how to put them on hold and everything else. Uh, ever since I got my Sacramento Kings library card, I am visiting the library a lot more often and I'm on book three for this month. So I'm um, well, really proud of myself, um, but also just really thankful for the staff and just anytime I go in there, everyone's so nice, so kind. And the amount of the, the people inside the library of all ages for different reasons, it's just incredible to see. So just thank you to you and your teams. Thank you. And do we have any others online or? Okay. Um, well, our next item is um, one that comes with a great deal of sadness for the library family. Um, this evening, we are adjourning in memory of Emmanuel Flynn. On August 31, Emmanuel Flynn, a beloved member of the library's IT team, died in a tragic car accident. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel was originally from war-torn Ghana, and he made his way to the United States for a new life and opportunity. He came to Sacramento Public Library in 2014 as an IT technician. He studied and worked hard to become a senior analyst in IT. Emmanuel was selfless, always came to work with a smile and helped others in need. He loved soccer and often spoke about his mother who still lives in Ghana. Emmanuel was survived by his wife, Alexandra, and his children, Joy, Emma, and Emmanuel Jr. Emmanuel's passing has been felt by all and he will be greatly missed. So this meeting is adjourned at 344 in memory of Emmanuel Flynn.